Hello friends, my name is Jeremy and I thought I would document this project a bit. So this is a 1985 four-wheel drive Nissan 720 pickup and it has the 2.4 liter Z24 engine. These engines are known for blowing head gaskets and potentially overheating. I got this one for a song and sure enough it had basically no compression between the number one and two cylinders. If you look right here, I've already pulled the head gasket off but this section here in the head gasket was completely gone so one inch of it was missing and when I got into the actual head found that it's pretty much a write-off one kind of humorous thing is if you look right here this is actually a piece of a socket that somebody cut in half to use one of the locating dowels there's also another one right up here which is one of the factory ones so at this point um, what I did, I learned a trick from a mechanic friend of mine years and years ago. I used to just pull all these hoses off and everything when I'd wrench on something and it made it much bigger project to put it back. But what I've started doing is just keeping things in units. So if you look, the whole intake manifold and everything is together and it's just unbolted from the head. And so what I'm going to do for now is just use a tie down strap over the fender well, keep that out of the way. Same with the power steering unit, the exhaust manifold. You can kind of see what I did with the strap. And my intent is just to pull the block right out of there. I'll leave the transmission in it because it's got the transfer case connected. And when I go to put it back together, everything will still be in the engine bay and I'll be able to bolt it back together pretty easily. So after I had the cylinder head off, the project kind of languished for about a month or two. And then I finally got back to it. And what I discovered when I pulled the rocker arm shafts off, is kind of hard to see but there's a big chunk missing out of there there's also some scoring in some of the others and up in the actual cylinder head there's scoring down in there some there this is cracked and that's actually where the camshaft sits in there's a uh, you see how it's got that ring around the camshaft and that locates it front and back most likely what somebody did is when they were taking this out, they grabbed the back and pried it up like this and cracked that. So that's a write off. And then these three bolt holes are stripped. So I actually got a, uh, it's a cane cert style thread repair kit, which uses a threaded hardened steel, it's threaded on the inside to match these bolts. And then it's oversized on the outside. You drill the hole, you tap the hole to I think 12 millimeter and you run this insert down in there, and then it's got four pins that stick up, and there's a driver that you knock those pins down, and that's what locks it in there. It's different than a time cert, and then it's definitely considered a lot heavier duty than a Healy coil. It's a lot easier to install, too, once you get it tapped. So because of this, I'm just going to write this head off. I'll keep it, but I'm on the lookout for a good used one. And here's Penny the Cat keeping an eye on progress. So where I sit with this, I was looking at getting just a cylinder head, but I'm into it this far. I have things unbolted from the engine block. It just makes sense to pull the block out of there, flip it over on an engine stand, and then check the bottom end bearings and whatnot and see what I got. So progressing a little bit here, as you saw before, I had the uh, exhaust manifold just pulled back out of the way. And I have a strap on the carburetor, intake manifold, the power steering pumps kind of pulled out of the way as well. So that frees up quite a bit of uh, space in here. So what I'm planning on doing is taking off the oil filter. I'll drain the oil, take the oil filter off, and that will make it easier to get to the motor mount, which is underneath here. Disconnect the wiring. I have the uh, cable on the starter plus the solenoid wire. I'll have to undo this fitting that goes to the uh, heater box, I believe, and undo well, this parts. This engine's been bodged together pretty, pretty poorly. Yeah, you can see how that hose just split there. So I'll just break that off and replace that for now. And then I'll have to possibly support the uh, transmission, but then I'm just gonna leave the transmission in it, like I said, and I'll just pull all this out. I have a cherry picker here. Um, I'm gonna throw a piece of plywood down on the ground to roll it. And I have an engine stand cleared up a little space over here uh, so I can work on it and we will see what we have. So first up, you take off this alternator. A couple of things I've been using on this project 
are these Gorilla Grip gloves. I got these off of Amazon. I think it was a 36 pack of right and left hand. Uh, it was not very expensive, 17 bucks maybe. They have a nitrile you know, work surface. They're elastic on the back, so you can't really use them with solvent. It will soak in, but it does an awesome job of keeping the grease and cuts off of your hand. Likewise, I have some of these LED fixtures here that I've put in the shop and I just grabbed one of those, put the little chains on it and I just hung it above the engine bay. And this thing's like the sun's in here almost. It's made working on this really, really nice without having to use a drop light that I have to move consistently. So here you can see I have the right motor mount out. And one little tip, and again, a lot of you guys probably know these things, but I don't know if the motor mounts are identical on this. I imagine they're not, they look a little different. So you can buy these paint pens, different brands, and I just cleaned off a little bit of the grease and marked R on it, and now I can set this safely away and I'll know exactly where it goes. Another tool that I recently bought, I haven't used an air ratchet in a very long time. I bought one of these Makita battery ones. I've seen Milwaukee has them, DeWalt, pretty much everybody makes them. All my power tools are Makita, so that's why I went with that brand. This one's good for, I think, 35 foot-pounds, so it's not an impact wrench, but you can use it like a ratchet. You crack the fastener loose with it, and it hit the trigger, and zip, it pulls the fasteners right out. That made pulling the head off of this engine and the intake manifold and all that, wherever I could get this tool, it made it go probably three times faster than it would have otherwise. It stops a lot of busted knuckles, too. So making some progress here, pulled off the oil filter, uh, disconnected the battery cable to the starter, unplugged the oil pressure sender, disconnected a couple of the wires, pulled out the engine mount. And one thing I found was the engine mount on this side, when I took it loose, the engine shifted and actually sat down, kind of wedged the uh, oil sender against the top of it. What I'm doing, because it still has a transmission bolted up and I'm gonna get the engine, the engine hoist hooked up here pretty quick. I just have a block of wood on a floor jack supporting the front of the engine. This little four-cylinder engine with the head off and everything disconnected really doesn't weigh too much. And I'm not crawling underneath of it at this point either. Um, I'm not going to undo any of the other bolts for the bell housing that will free up the engine until they have the hoist connected for safety. So a little bit of an update here. So i got a basic chain. Uh, this chain isn't super heavy duty, but again, this engine block is all I'm pulling out and it's going to be plenty. Um, not taking the hood off because... I should be able to fish this right out of there without having to deal with that. Plus then I won't have to line the hood back up. So there's one bolt left on the back of the bell housing. You can't really see it here. And I believe there's one underneath. And then what I did was used a old uh, scissor type jack out of a Lexus LS400, which is actually amazingly strong. I have that underneath under the transmission, just supporting that so that then the block won't have any bending load on it. And hopefully this will be out of here in just a few minutes. So a real quick update, got the engine pulled out. Unfortunately, I don't have a stand to hold the phone or I would have recorded the whole thing, done a time lapse or something. But what I ran into is you can see way down there, way in the background, right in the middle of the video is uh, part of the differential carrier assembly. I had to take that bolt out and there's another one on the other side. And those had to be driven out, probably pretty rusty. And likewise, you can see down there that cross member with that support piece. There's two more bolts on the other side are what supports the differential. So the differential on this is really not unlike the rear differential on an old Datsun 510. And it's got front and rear mounts separate from the transmission. And I have a jack supporting the transmission as well. So one of the bolts is pretty hard to find on the transmission. It was just buried in a bunch of grease. But... Once I found that, I just rocked the engine back and forth a little bit and it cracked loose. And then I ran into the oil pan hitting the differential and that oil pan is pretty interesting. I'll show you a picture of that in a little bit. Anyway, because it's four-wheel drive, it's very common. A lot of four-wheel drives have rear sump that has to fit over the, the axle or carrier setup, the differential setup. So. Here's Miss Maggie, our Great Dane, out checking things out. She's a real sweetheart got dark and here's the oil pan for this thing kind of a profile view of it and this would be from the flywheel side you can see 
you know, it's kind of an interesting engineering challenge, but you can see that rear part with the oil plug, that was over the back of the axle, and I wasn't able to pull the engine out without dropping the axle. So this is what we're looking at. Show you over here real quick. Curious, there is some debris. You can see it on the intake screen. Uh, this engine did not have an oil cap on it when I bought it, but it hadn't been run in, well, last registration was like 2010. So I suppose it could have gotten stuff down inside of there, but in general, there was fasteners missing and other things. So it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, dirt had got into it before it was just parked. So I pulled off the number two uh, main crank bearing, and this is what we're looking at. So let's see if this will zoom in a little bit. So it's not worn down to the backing, which is great. There's no backing showing. There are some hairline scratches in it, and so I'm going to have to go over the crank with a fine-tuned comb, tooth comb, to look at that. So did a quick look over this engine, and one of the things I found was if you look at the light here, you will see a number one next to that kind of bow tie looking logo, and down in there, there's a two, this one has a three. And this one has a two. So what I did is I did a quick stamp. It's got four on it on the web. It has three, two, and one. See where I stamped it uh, to keep those all in line. I did pull that first cap off and saw very minor scratchings. Same with the main bearing, but I am going to go ahead and pull all the pistons out, um, piston connecting rods. And at a minimum, I'll probably go ahead and put new rings in it. I'll do a quick hone job and rings on it, um, unless I find even more damage. So, so far, I'm pretty pleased with the bottom end of this engine. It's looking pretty good. Uh, when I pull everything out, I'll go ahead and pressure wash the outside and blow out all the oil passages. Still kind of, like I said, I'm kind of curious where some of that gunk came from on the, uh, the garbage came on that screen and how much of that got into the engine. I will go over the crank also very carefully with a fingernail, feeling for any scratches or high spots or anything before I put it back together. But so far, the bearings look like pretty good. Look, they're in pretty good condition.